Now, look at 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by what? Okay. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Look at this. While, listen. While we look not at the things which are seen. Oh, I have no money. I lost my car. I don't have a job. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go rob somebody. I'm going to go rob a liquor store. I'm going to steal a car. Well, as soon as they catch you in it, they take the car away from you and put your dumb self back in jail again. <laughs> he said, I don't know how I ever got here. You got yourself there. You didn't listen to God. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Hmm. The things that you can see that Satan's trying to do to you are bigger than the whole world to you at that time. Did you know that? You ever been in the hospital overwhelmed? They tell you you're going to die? How do you feel? Oh, I feel wonderful. Everything is beautiful. No, everything ain't beautiful. I need help. <laughs> Somebody help. <laughs> Doctor, what can you do? I'm sorry, we can't do anything. This is the end right here, my friend. Let me bless you. Ain't going to do nothing. Nothing, nothing. But if you go find the answer to your problem in here, in this book, and it says, I'll be with you in trouble and rescue you, whoo! Do you believe he will? How many times has he rescued you already? You know what a man told me one time? He said, you ought to be dead. I said, a couple of times I was about half dead. <laughs> he said, you ought to be dead. I walked up to a guy's house with four people, and they put me up in the front. And I, I don't know why they did that. And the guy opened the door and bam, started shooting. And you're talking about, hey, that, I was kind of fat then too. <laughs> that fat boy could run. I knocked them all down. <laughs> I can get on and let me out of here, man. I got with the wrong people. I got my eyes focused on something else. And they led me to my death. But God rescued me. Does God rescue us because we deserve it? Absolutely not. Do you buy your children Christmas presents because they deserve it? Most of they don't. <laughs> my kid told me one time, he said, I want a pony. We live in an apartment. I said, well, you can keep him in your room. <laughs> I said, you can't have no pony. He said, but I want one. I said, I want a lot of things, but I don't get it. But everything you need, God will supply. My God shall, shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by, by or through Christ Jesus. Well, I don't see how he can get you money. He takes me around the world without any money. Now, I get money, but I didn't have it. Somebody gives it to me. I was preaching in the church, and he said, I heard you're going to Peru. We said, we're trying to, and he said, no, you're not. I got your ticket and Richard and his wife's ticket, and here's some money for a motel, and here's a, what? I said, we're going. He said, I'm paying your way. Why did he do that? Because God wanted me to do that. See, when you're trying to do something God don't want you to do, he don't provide the finances for it. Thank you. No, he don't. So I've learned, I quit thinking about what's going on. Because in my life and your life too, something's going on every week and every week it's different. And we're tossed to and fro by all the situations and we don't know what to do. Focus on Jesus. Looking here, look at, let's go to Hebrews 12. I'm gonna, man, time's passing fast. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1 through 3. <clears throat> Therefore, seeing we are also we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Oh my goodness. There's a whole bunch of people around me trying to tell me something all the time, not just witnessing about the Bible. Let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which does so easily beset us. Do you know you have one predominant sin in your life and it controls you until you get delivered from it? Everybody's got one predominant sin. Thief, liar, whatever. Whatever it is. And that thing will dominate you until you get delivered from it. You guy asked me one time, do you deliver people? I said, yeah. He said, don't that hurt? And I said, what? He said, do you, do you cut their livers out? I said, deliver them. I said, no. I don't do that. You, I know you think then it comes in here and lies to us. No, it's the truth. Listen, this stuff is greater than any comedy and material anywhere. Just go to church. There's a lot of weirdos in there and strange people, and they do really weird things. And I said, you people can get delivered tonight. <laughs> and he said, huh? <laughs> he said, are you going to cut the livers down? <laughs> I said, no, I'm not going <laughs> to. We're going to pray for him. He said, oh, good. <laughs> Should have threw him on the floor and had two or three people hold him. <laughs> Scare him to death. <clears throat> we focus on insignificant things. We make molehills. No, we make mountains out of molehills. One little thing in your life, my whole life is ruined. What are you focused on? Ruin, failure, rejection. We get it from everybody. All of those things. If you focus on it, it'll destroy you. You have to get your mind on Jesus. Think about Jesus. Pray. Hey, you know, a guy said to me, well, I, I don't know all the words you know. I said, do you speak English? He said, yeah. I said, you know all the words I know. You probably know more words than I know. He said, yeah, but I went to a church and a guy just prayed beautifully. I said, forget about that. Our Father, we worship you, Almighty God, and all that kind of stuff. Go somewhere else. It'd be better to go to a movie than go in there. You're religious. He said, well, what, what, can you give me a prayer that you pray? I said, I can. And I said, it works every time. He said, what is it? I said, help me, Jesus. He said, what else? I said, that's it. He knows where I am. He said, be with me in trouble. Come and get me out. Help. He said, well, I can do that. I said, well, get after it. <laughs> Just call out every day. Help me, Jesus. Get me out of this mess. Get me out of that. But when he gets you out, don't you go back and get in it again. God told me, he said, I, I've just made mistakes and fallen into sin four or five times. I said, and you're also a big liar. You don't think I talk to people like that? I do. I said, you're a liar. You didn't fall into sin. You went over there and practiced sin four or five times. You know why? Because he got his mind set on that. And so he kept doing that and the more you yield to it, the more you want to do it, and the stronger Satan gets a hold on you. Do you, you better hear me now, I'm preaching good. This is what destroys people in the church. There was a person, he told me about it, Pastor, that came to this church that he knew this person, and they had another church. <laughs> and they came over here and tried to take people out of his church, think, acting like he was, they were their friends, you know and come over and was trying to take people out of here. <clears throat> you can't build a church like that. You're a sheep thief. You're, gonna, you're a thief. I know people's done it before. Not, not any church I pastored, but a couple of, one guy said a man came and he was handing out flyers to his church with a little brochure and everything in there. And so the pastor just walked down and said, let me see that. Come here, ushers, take this guy out and all his material. Listen, you can't build a church that way and you can't build a life that way. You have to get your life straightened out. You have to give it to Jesus. You have to repent. And then you start getting your eyes into this word and read this word. Now listen, this book is alive, right? When you read it, it reads you. 
and you'll read things in there about you. Well, don't focus on that. Oh, my God, look at that. It's a sin. I've been doing it. Well, quit doing it. <clears throat> God kept, I saw this on a comedy thing. God kept slapping his hand. He said, it hurts when I do that. He just kept doing it. And this guy said, well, stop doing that. <laughs> we just keep on doing things that hurt us, and we know it does, and we do nothing about it. There was a whole lot of people I had to turn loose in my life when I really made a dedication to God. Some of them were family members. You mean you left your family? No, I just didn't get involved in the stuff they were involved in. If you are sincere with God, you don't have to know everything about God. You can know nothing about God. If you believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall be what? What will he be? He'll be somebody that does not die but lives forever. <clears throat> well, how are you going to live forever? Because when you leave here as a Christian to be absent from the body, your spirit leaves your body, it goes to the presence of the Lord. Well, what about your body? We throw it in the dirt. But listen, in the resurrection, that body is going to come up and be re reunited with its spirit, and it's going to be a glorified man just like Jesus. That's the reason it said when we see him, we will be like him, glorified. I like that. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I've got to think right and get my sights on something that will produce victory in my life. Jesus is the number one person above everybody. <clears throat> if you're not married, are you looking to get married? Before you get married, you make sure Jesus wants you to, God wants you to marry them. Well, how can I know that? Just pray, God, if this is not the one, show me, and they'll show you something. They'll expose themselves. And when you see that, you get your eyes off of that and get it back over here. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. You're going to help me. Lord, I need a wife. I need a husband, whatever. And God can bring somebody into your life. <clears throat> 